One we want to look at is number 16. So we're looking at the credit card finance charges. Again, whenever you hear finance charge, you're thinking about how much interest you owe. So on number 16, it says Warren's credit card statement for October showed a previous balance of $239, new purchases of $174, and payments and credits of $95. The card's annual percentage rate is 24%. The company uses a daily periodic rate. What is Juan's finance charge and new balance for October using the previous balance method? So there's a lot of things that you have to pay attention to on this one, especially the vocabulary. Okay? So what are we gonna do on this? So the first thing we need to take is 24%. Divided by 365, right? And because we need a daily periodic. So the percent would be that. Um, when it says that it is, we're using the previous balance method. So we're gonna take this percent, whatever we find that decimal s, times what? Times 239. No, times 239.80. 80. This is going to give me my what? My finance chart, right? So this is my finance. Basically the interest that I have to pay, right? So that would be one answer. The second answer would be to find my new balance. So from $239, what are we going to do? Add my purchases, subtract my payments, and add my finance charge. So whatever this number is right here, it's going to go right there. Okay, so let's do, let's get some numbers in here. So this is that one that's kind of weird sometimes, right? Point zero 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 six five seven five. Perfect. Let's just go with the seven spots like we've been doing lately. All right. So that tells you the seven of spots includes the four and then the three things. So I'm going to take this times my two hundred thirty nine dollars. So I got fifteen dollars. No, this isn't right. What do I got to do there besides that? Because it's a daily one. Yeah, I got to multiply by the number of days in my month, right? What month are we in? October. How many days do we got? So we're going to take this times this times 31. Oh, I got a lot of things on there now. Why 31? October. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Maybe four dollars and eighty-nine cents. They put enough zeros in? No, I mean probably. And I got four eighty-eight. There we go. So four dollars and eighty-nine cents. Everybody agree with that? So then I'm gonna add that over here. And then if we do all, so this is one answer. Again, make sure you put all the answers that are an answer on your answer sheet. Some of you still aren't doing that. I got to go looking for them. And unfortunately, I'm not real patient, so I don't look too long. And then you get mad because you think you have the answer. So I got 324.19. Anybody verify? So 319 is my what? Or 324.19 is my new balance, right? So again, remember, my new balance means this is the number that I would take if I had to do the next one. And start to do the next one. Make sense? So, and number 17, I thought you told me there wasn't one of these on us. What is Juan's finance charge in new balance if we use the adjusted balance method? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> so what do we do different in the adjusted balance? Take out the purchases. But when do we do our finance charge? We got to subtract out this first, right? So this is what number are we on now? 17, I think. So now I'm going to subtract out my $95 first. So any payments that I have. And then I'm going to do basically the same process, right? So now I'm going to take 144.80 times this times 31. So that's the only thing that really changes. In 16, we use the previous balance and do my finance charge right away. In the 17, for the adjusted balance, we subtract out the payments first, and we actually like this one a little better because it's a smaller amount, right? Do we you want to finish it? Everybody understand what you're going to do, or do we finish it? So basically, now we're going to take this times that funky uh, decimal again times 31 to get my finance charge. And then I still have my purchases and that finance charge to the end. It's probably not going to vary very much. Right? A couple dollars, maybe. If I can tell you the answer. The answer should have been $295 for your finance charge. And then your new balance is $322.25. So it's only $2. Wait, so do you difference. add your things or do you never add them? You still have to add them. So basically, the only difference is. I'm still gonna do all this, but the 95 happens right away here. And then I would do my process and figure it out. So this one I'm gonna take here and put it right there. So times a decimal. Right. Times 31. Or $2.95, I think they said. And then I would take this number plus 174.50 plus my 295 for my new grand total. Okay. So it's just when I do that finance charge part. All right, we're gonna sleep, go home. Make sense between 16 and 17? All right, jump down to 19, average daily balance. This is the long one, right? This is the long one. What is Madison's finance charge for August and new balance using the average daily balance method, excluding new purchases? So let's come back to 18 and 19 because that'll be the longest one that we have to do. Let's jump down to 20. So this is where we started uh, having the problems on the quiz. Because you... Uh, don't understand the difference between the percentages. So you got to read carefully about the percentages. So in number 20, it says, you love borrow $250 on a cash advance from a credit card company. She was charged a daily periodic rate of 0.053%. So is that my decimal? Is that my percentage? Or sorry, is that my decimal? No. If they give a decimal in a percent, that's still the percent, so I have to move it two places to the left, okay? For 25 days, she had the cash advance. She was also charged a 4% cash advance fee. So what's the difference between the two percents? The first percent is how much, or the percent I'm gonna use to figure out the interest. The second percent is how much I have to pay for a fee. So do you use that fee charge of 2% for the first cash advance number? Yes. So the 500 is still big. 250. Or 250, yeah. whatever she took out. Yes. Okay. And that you don't, but you don't do the number of days. Okay. You just do 0.04 times 250. Yeah, that was okay. So what number is this again? 20. 20. So I'm gonna take so this is the way that I would do it. I would figure out my fee first. So I'm gonna take the total that I borrowed times whatever my fee percent is. 
and find my answer. Anybody do that? How much? Ten dollars. So ten dollars is my fee. Now I'm going to do two fifty times that daily periodic rate. But again, remember, this isn't a rate yet, or this is a true percentage, so I still have to move my decimal two places. Times 25 days. Again, because that's how long I borrowed it, right? So when I do all of this, this is going to figure out my what? My finance charge, how much interest I owe. So, 250 times 3.31. Okay, so now what does the question ask? What was the total amount this lady had to pay back? So, that would be this, plus this, plus 250. So the grand total that she has to pay back is 263.13. If they just ask you how much fees and, and interest you would pay, then it's just adding those two things together. All right? But again, it's the vocabulary that's bothering some of you. Questions with this one? Yes? Um, I'm not What's the $299 and $320.67? So, Okay with that one? Again, recognize the vocabulary. Let's do 21. In 21 it says Javier's credit card has an APR of 14% for purchases and 21 for cash advances. So this is why there's multiple ones on this one. There's multiple ones on this one because again, you have a credit card, you bought things on it, but you're also gonna use it for a cash advance in the same time. So they're different percentages, but you have to find your total for the whole thing. So it says they use an average daily balance method with a periodic or daily periodic rate for purchases. They use a daily periodic rate for cash advances and a cash advance fee of. In a 31 day billing cycle, Javier has an average daily balance for purchases of $143.66. So that tells me right away, 143.66 is for purchases. So I'm gonna use my purchase percent. What is the purchase percent? 14% and it's what kind of percent? This is my annual, but we're gonna do daily, so it's divided by 365. Anytime it says daily, it's 365. Anytime it says monthly, I divide by 12. So I take my 14 divided by 365. I got three left. Okay, so mine is point zero 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 three eight three six. Agree? Okay. So I'm gonna take this times my 143.66 times what? Remember, if it says daily, I gotta look how many days I had it. 31. So if I do all of that math right there, I got $1.71. Anybody else? So again, that's my what? That's my finance charge, but just for my purchases. Now it says what? I also had a cash advance. So basically the cash advance part is just like what we did on 20. So I'm gonna do this whole process again, but on this part. And then I would add the two together. Okay, do you wanna go through the cash advance part again? Yes. Okay, so the cash advance says, uh, it's 3% of $300. So I borrowed $300. My fee is 3%. So I get $0099 for my cash advance or fee. Okay. 
and then I'm going to take 300 times, but I have to figure out my percentage. Uh, now we're at 21% divided by 365. So 21 divided by 365 divided by 100 gets me 0 0.000573. 0 0 I take this times 300 times 31 days again. What did we cash advance for all 31 days? 23 days, thank you. And what'd you come up with there? Times 300 times 23. $3.97 if I round up. So then what does it say? What are his total finance charges? So my total finance charges are this, this, and that. And I would add them all together. So 397 plus 171 plus $9 gets me $14.68. So those are the fees and the finance charges that I was charged to do all that stuff for that month. See, this is fun stuff. Do you want the one with like the days, like um, and balance, and one of those? Ooh. Any questions with this one? So again, you just got to make sure that you read the problem and know what they mean. Uh, let's look at 22. The previous balance of Delaney's credit card was $354.87. She made $210 in new purchases and his, oh, Delaney's a guy. And his periodic finance charges were $5.32. His minimum payment is 3% of his current balance, rounded to the nearest whole dollar. What is his minimum payment? Hmm. Okay. I would say we want to probably do more 23 than 22, though. Let's look at 23. Raven's credit card has, has a previous balance of 125. She made $175 in new purchases during the billing cycle and made a payment of $50. She was charged 188 in finance charges. She wants to pay off the entire balance of the card. How much should she pay? So I guess neither one of them is the chart one. You could make a chart one in your brain. It's the word you have. Oh, okay, so we could do the minimum payment one on 22, sorry. So, 22, my previous balance was, help me with the number. Three, five, four, dot, eight, seven. Okay. Um, and then we're gonna have uh, our transaction here. Our transaction is my purchases, probably. Then we're going to know that we're going to have our minimum payment somewhere. We're going to have a column for our finance charge. What is this? I've never seen this. Have you done this? Yes. And then we would have our what, new total. Okay. What day would, did we do this? So, um, probably not the same order that we always did it in, but if I figure out, uh, you would have to know how they fi figure out their finance charge. So if it's from the previous balance, uh, let's just go with it that way. So we're going to figure out our finance charge, but we need a percentage. And so his periodic finance charges was $5.32. So they figured it out for you. What's your finance charge for? Okay. Um, if we make an average of $210 in new purchases, okay, and 
it says that our minimum payment is 3% of the current balance. Okay? So, again, if this is from the previous balance, I'm going to figure out my minimum payment. So I have to take 354.87 times my 3%. So if I do that, 0.03 times. Three fifty four eighty seven. I would get ten dollars and sixty five cents. So again, notice my minimum payment in this only three percent. It's going to take me a long, long time, right, to figure or to pay off my current balance, especially if I keep doing this. So what's my new total? What do I do? Three fifty four transactions. If these are purchases, we are going to add those. We're going to subtract our minimum payment, and we have to add a finance charge to get our new total. Okay? So, punch all the hit to our calculator. And our new total is $559.54. So if you had to do this in multiple months, this would come down here. And that would start the process all over again. So a lot of them that we had done said, well, let's just say that we commit to Having zero, we're not going to use it anymore. Okay? And instead of having a minimum payment, we're going to make um, a $75 payment every single month. So we don't know exactly what our percentage was, but we would have to have a finance charge percentage to figure out what our finance charge was. If we kind of guesstimate what this is, obviously it's got to be more than 500 or $5.32 because we went way up here. So my new finance charge, let's just say, is $7.15. Okay. So then I'm going to do my calculations again, and I would do 559 minus 75 plus my 75 for my new balance. And then I have to do it again. But basically, we would have to do more math to figure out our finance charge every single time. And they just didn't give us that in that particular problem. That's the one you were talking about. Um, so if we want one of those we'll, at the end and we have time, we'll have to go back in the last section and look at that. Okay. Um, well, I kind of made it all up, though. So I don't really have an answer. <laughs> this one right here would have been this minus this plus that would have been my new total. But I totally guesstimated that finance charge. Yeah. Um, how about uh, number 24? How do I find my debt to income ratio? And the money I make. So, again, what's the top number? My debt things are what? What, are, what puts me in debt? Any of my loans? Rent? Just loans and, and uh, well, yeah, that would be a part of my loans or on your credit card. Okay, so credit cards, um, loans, and rent. That's going to be the total. And then I'm going to divide that by however much money I make. Okay. So let's go back to um, 18 or 19. I don't care which one you want to do. 19 is probably a little easier because it's less work. But we can do either one. 18. So this is the one where you have to calculate how many days you have at a time or something, right? So if we're reading through 18, it says Madison's credit card statement for August showed these items. On 8 1, she had a previous balance of 220.53. Okay, and then uh, remember, so we had what? Number of days that that happened? 
What else did we have? Oh, we had a tr transaction, right? Did we have more purchases, like Jeff said, or did we pay it off? And that was a calculation. And then uh, we'd have our new balance over here. And we'd have a running total. So again, I didn't write them in order, I don't think. So if that bothers you, sorry. Okay, now we gotta read through the problem, right? So what's the next thing they tell us? 8-5. A purchase, which means plus or minus. Plus. Plus, of what did you say? 56.89. 56.89. Again, remember, it's a plus because we're adding on to our total. Our total amount. So how many days did we have $220.56? Four days. Four days. So my transaction is really nothing for this one. And... 220 times four is gonna go into my running total, right? My new balance here would be the same thing if we really wanted to be technical about it. So did you do that? 882.24. Okay, so here's the problem I think that a lot of people are having. When you do this now, some of you wanna take this and bring it over to here to use it. This really has nothing to do except for your grand total. So that end column, you kind of got to put out of your mind when you're doing the rest of your calculations. Okay? So, 56.89, I really should have had this shifted over a little bit. My number of days probably over here. My 56.89 has to be added to what? 220.56. So what do we get? 277.45. And how, okay, so what's my next day? 814. Okay, so 814. Before we talk about 814, how many days did we have? 277.45. 14 minus 5 plus 1 is 10. So I take 10 times 277.45. So I get $2,774.50. Okay. Did you say the total? Um, no, wait, sorry. This one will really be 9, right? 5 minus 1 is 4. 14 minus 5 is 9. This one will only be 9. Right? 8, 5, 8, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, right? You don't be in the 14 day. So then this one is not, <laughs> this one will change. No, I can't count. 2,497. Say it again. 2,497. Thank you very much. Okay. On 814, what was my transaction? Purchase of 190.13. 190.03. 23. Okay. Uh, so my new balance is taking 277 plus 190, right? Eight, six, seven, six, four. Next transaction. Eight twenty-five. So just subtract the two. You get what? Eleven. So I'm going to take eleven. Oops, sorry. So take eleven times four sixty-seven sixty-eight. Five thousand one hundred and forty-four point forty-two. How many cents? Forty-eight. Thank you very much. Next, uh, on eight twenty-five, what was my transaction? Payment of one fifty. Minus one fifty. So now I'm going to subtract one fifty. So sixty-eight seven one three. What's my next transaction? Was there one? Probably not. So, how many days are in August? 30. 30? 30. 31. 31. 31. So, 25 to 31. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. This is the one that you're going to add one to because you're counting both days. And how many did you say? Seven? So, seven times my number is two. 
two, two, three, 76. Okay? So now, what do we do? We take the add up all your last columns. Now we use a running total, right? Add them up. This is a big one, right? $10,747.53? Yeah. Okay. Now what do we do with that? Divide by the number of days. How many days was it? Yeah. Why are we doing this? This is how much I had on average on my bill. But now, what does it say? So, what's my finance charge? Okay, but that's the right thought, but they already tell you that it's a monthly periodic rate. So, they already did that for you. So, just take your 1.6 and move your decimal. I'm going to take this times 0.016. $5.54.55. And this is my what again? This is my finance charge. Now what does it ask us? Is that what it asks us? And the new balance. So, I take my finance charge and do what with my last number of my series? Add it. Thirteen, twelve, thirteen, two, three, three, twenty-three, twenty-three. That's a fun number to say. Holy cow, we did it right. So you can see why there's a lot of chances of doing that one wrong, right? I mean, because, you know, like you said, if you don't count up the days right, you don't uh, add or subtract, or if you add or subtract the wrong things. I always have the days because I always get a 32 or like a 29, like literally almost every problem. Like I do the days wrong, so I have to go back and find it. <laughs> I can't count. I just, that's why I got a wrong on my test. I couldn't. I, I just forgot the three days. Good job. Forgot so, the days. that's that. Um, if you want another one like uh, our chart, it's probably easiest to go back and just look at. Um, in the assignment. So if you turn back to page 155, 154, that's kind of the chart that we were um, kind of stumbling through on those two problems. So when you do the chart, again, if you go across, I'm looking at the dark blue chart on page 154. So you start with your previous balance. You have to figure out your finance charge. But again, in the, uh, I guess, word part of the problem, way at the top of the page, they would tell you, again, what your minimum payment is, what your APR is, and you have to use that information in your chart. So if you go way to the top, it says her credit card has an APR of 15%. That's what they're going to use to find the finance charge that's in the table. So you would use 15% divided by, what is it, monthly? Divided by 12 on the previous balance. So I would take 15 divided by 12, move my decimal to 0 0.0125. Wait, why would you divide by 55? Because it doesn't say it's daily. It says it's monthly. Oh, okay. okay. So I'm going to use that for my finance charge, and I'm going to multiply that times the 2,000. And that's why my finance charge changes all the time because my finance charge is going to either go up or down depending on if I add on to my total or if I subtract my total, depending if I stopped using it or if I continue to use it. If I continue to use it, my finance charge is going to build all the time. So where do you take your finance charge from? Not the final balance, right? Just one of the ones? The previous balance, yes. So, and in the dark blue chart, it's always the first column. 
So like if you did it consecutive months, you would multiply that 0 0.0125 times 2000, 2093, 2186. And that's why the finance charge kept going up because my previous balance kept rising because I'm spending still more than I'm paying off. Okay. Um, and then, so like the teal one to the right is better for us because we're making consistent payments and we're not using our credit card anymore. That's what makes the difference there. Okay. So again, if you are still confused with that process, you need to come see me sometime and we can go through that process on that page. I apologize that the book didn't have one of those on the back for the review. Okay? Should be fun times. A lot of good uh, math in this one. 